The acronym APDL originated from ANSYS Parametric Design Language. So it's natural to assume that parameters are a key reason why APDL is so popular and powerful. The development of parametric models is useful to gain insight into the behavior of an engineering design to run optimization or, or robust design studies and to develop scripts that non-engineers can run, for example, as the back end of a web browser based application. Tables are a powerful mechanical APDL type of parameter that allow us to define complex loads and boundary conditions that can be a function of different variables such as spatial location, time, temperature, and others. Arrays are another type of parameter that are very useful when working with ordered data. The ordered part often is a list of existing node or element numbers. Arrays can be used to retrieve data from a simulation, for example, to gather a list of results for later automated reporting, or to perform operations on the resulting data. Other examples include querying the result of an element and then deactivating that element if the result exceeds a certain value. Or perhaps we could highlight a critical area with an automated script. These and other operations are possible because of parameters. To get started, we will do a quick review on scalar parameters and delve deeper into parameter math. Then we will look at arrays and getting data into parameters. We will finish with a workshop showing several examples of working with parameters. Okay, let's get started. In the language basics lesson, we introduced the APDL concept of the scalar parameter or parameters that hold a single value. Param parameters can be defined either with the star set command or directly with the equal sign. Param parameter names can be up to 32 characters, should start with a letter, and contain only letters, numbers, or the underscore character. As a general rule, we should stay away from mechanical APDL names such as command names or field names of commands such as x, y, z, x, y, y, z, z, x, etc. A good practice is to use either a number or an underscore in the parameter name. For example, instead of x, we could use x1 or x underscore 1. While we stick to numer numeric parameters in this lesson, character parameters can be defined with up to 8 characters by enclosing the value in single quotes. When defining a parameter, the following operators can be used. Plus for addition, minus for subtraction, etc. The less than and greater than operators need some additional explanation, which is best done by an example. Say we have parameters A, B, and C, which value is already defined. Then define the parameter D to be equal to the quantity of A less than B plus C. If A is less than B, then the expression evaluates to D is equal to A plus C. Otherwise, D is equal to B plus C. There are other operators available, such as the absolute value, the natural log, and rand xy, which returns a random number in the range of x to y, and the, and the typical trigonometric operators. Please see the following help entry for a full list of available functions. A common command used with expressions is star a fun, which defines the units for angular functions, with radians being the default. Please see the mechanical APDL help command entry guide on star AFON for the full list of APDL commands affected by this command. Arrays are multi-valued parameters of between one and five dimensions. A one-dimensional array is a vector, a two-dimensional is a grid of values, a three-dimensional array is a collection of 2D arrays in separate planes, then four and five D arrays are collections of the lower order arrays grouped into books and shelves. Like scalar parameters, there are two basic types of arrays those that hold numeric and those that hold alphanumeric data. Here we will concentrate those on hold, that hold numeric data. We can further divide arrays that hold numeric data into arrays and tables. The rows, columns, and planes of an array are given by the indices i, j, and k, and each location of an array is called an element of the array. We can divide arrays in any mechanical APDL processor with the star dim command. The basic form is to define a 1 through 3D array is as follows. Par is the name of the array. The type can either be array or table. For 4 and 5D arrays, there are specific type names such as ARR4, TAB4, and so on. The I, J, and K max fields define the extent of the dimensions. 
that is the number of rows, columns, and planes of the array. What differentiates arrays and tables are the indices. Arrays have integer in indices that start at 1. Array elements are defined as parameter name ij for a 2D array, and in this example, the location name 2,4 holds the value of 2.34. Tables are slightly different in that they have an accessible index of number 0. The regular indices start at 0 and are integers, but the 0 row and column in, for example, a 2D table can have a non-integer and ever-increasing value. When defining the table, the indices are used when table elements are given, in a, are given a value. But when they're accessed, zero row and column are used. As an example, we can define a table such that the rows define time. The first, second, and third row indices of the zero column can be defined as, say, 2.1, 4, and 17. The same indices of the first column could be a node applied force value in the table used in place of a specific force value in the F command. When solving at say time six, then the applied value is interpolated between the values given at the table time entries of four and 17. Let's now spend more time on how to define values of an array or a table. The same star set or equal sign method can be used to define array elements with a shortcut of up to 10 values given on one line. Let's say we have a 10 element vector named XYZ. Then we could fill out the whole vector like so, which fills out the vector with the first 10 even numbers. Alternatively, we could use this to define the first three odd numbers starting at the third element of the vector. The APDL command star vfill can be used to define array values much like the star set command, except it has additional functionality. It can define a constant value for all array elements, ramp array element values between two values, and has several methods to define randomly generated data into the array elements. Star V read and star T read can be used to read in data to the array elements from an external file into arrays and tables respectively. Once filled with data, arrays can be operated on, often creating new arrays in the process. The star V func command performs a function on a single array value and writes the value into a new array. This can be a trigonometric function copy, square root, ascending or descending sort as examples. The star v oper command operates on two arrays to form a third. For example, we can subtract one array from another, compare two arrays, take the derivative of one array with, res one array with respect to another. Star vsc fun performs a vector to scalar function. An example is defining a scalar parameter that is the minimum of the values contained in the vector. Other functions include finding the index location with a maximum value, summing of, the, uh, summing of the vector values, and finding the mean of a vector value. The star status command can be used to list array parameters, and the star v write command can be used to write an array to an external file with the format of the user's choice. Given the integer indices, arrays are often used to gather model data for manipulation and writing out to an external file. On the other hand, tables are often used when re reading in data from a file so that the data can be used by some other APDL command. To force the use of table values, the table name is enclosed in percent signs and used in the command's value field. More information on using tables to define low values can be found in this help location. Lastly, model information can be retrieved and stored into parameters. The star get command retrieves the single value of a specific item and stores it as a scalar parameter or into the, an array specific element location. The available data is that active data stored in the computer's memory at the time. This includes solid model and mesh data, material data, and results to name a few. Examples include, for pre-processing, the actual area of areas 1 and 3, the Y location of no numbers 27. Solution the current time step size, the frequency of mode number n for post-processing, the stiffness energy of element 10, the maximum value of the last contour plot, and other general, such as the current job name or the current time. Please see the mechanical APDL help command guide entry on star get for the full list of the available items as the list is quite long. 
star v get is similar to star get, except that it gets multiple values of a specific item and stores it into multiple array elements. For example, we can star v get the lo x location value of every node in the model and store it into the first column of an array with the number of rows equal to the count of nodes. Though the list of items that can be retrieved is shorter, as there are fewer items that exist for multiple entities, the list of the items that can be retrieved is still quite long. Again, please see the mechanical APD help command guide entry on star vget for the full list. That completes the lesson portion, so let's move on to the workshop. The workshop is in three parts. Part one defines a table and uses it to apply a load. The second part gathers the load information from the finite element model into an array and plots the array values. And the last part gathers the x, y, and z location of all the nodes into an array. Then it lists the array and the nodes for comparison. A 10 by 10 by one unit block has been meshed and made available via a mechanical APDL CDB file. So as before, step one is to enter the preprocessor and read in the CDB file. The plan is to define a heat generation to all the elements in the model and have the value be squared of the x location of the elements. Since the block is 10 units in x, let's define a 10 row and one column table named hgen. Now, using a star do loop construct, we define the zeroth column with the x position and, and the first column with the square of the position. And then let's verify the table with the star status command. As we can see, the values are the square of the locations. We can choose to verify the applied load visually. So first we turn on the contour values of the applied heat generation with a forward slash PBF command, and then define the load with the BFE command, making sure that the heat generation value is given as percent sign hgen1 percent sign. Then plot the elements and inspect the result. And the heat generation rate looks acceptable. For the second workshop, let's imagine that we are given the model with the load applied and would like to verify the values with some other method. We can gather the applied load of one row of elements into an array, then plot the array value using an xy graph style. To start, use, let's use the esel command to select one row of elements, then star get the count of the elements. Next, we define an array with the number of rows equal to the element count, and two columns, one to store the x location of the element centroid, and the other to store the heat generation value. As we can see, the element numbers happen to increase with no gaps as we move along the x. We will take advantage of that when gathering the data. However, for a more general case, a more sophisticated selection routine would need to be implemented. To start, the minimum element ID number of the current set of the selected elements is retrieved with star get and stored into E underscore min. Looping over the count of elements, start get is again used to get the element centroid x location and the heat generation value applied into the array. Within the loop, the minimum numbered element is unselected, and the star get command repeated to find the minimum numbered element of the, those that are left. And now an xy graph of the element's heat generation can be plotted versus the element's x centroid location with the star vplot command. And as expected, the applied heat generation is a squared value of the position value. For the last workshop, let's use the star vget command. All the nodes are currently selected and the star get command is used to get the node count. Then an array is defined with the rows equal to the node count and three columns for the x, y, and z location of the nodes. The star v get command 
is issued to gather the node locations. By default, the star v get command loops over the node ID field of the command, which is the zero after the word node. The starting array location is given to store the data for each star v get. So the first star v get is getting the x location to the first column starting with the first row. And lastly, we will list the node array data with a star status command and then compare it with the node listing from the node list command in list. The star status command shows the values for the first column, and then you need to scroll down to see the values for the subsequent columns. You can see that the values match the Y column. This concludes the workshop.